Hello, my name is Marcelo Freitas and I'm here defending the preservation of the text of the New Testament using the line of transmission of Family 35. The subject of this video is the textual criticism principle that says that manuscripts should be weighted, not counted. But first, we need to clarify that if we talk about who was the best president, the most important soccer player, or the dog with the best pedigree, there will be many disagreements. These are subjective questions. It depends on our preferences. And there are several candidates who are very well qualified. But if you ask which president voted more loss, which soccer player scored more goals, or which dog runs faster, that information is objective. Thus, we need to differentiate between subjective and objective criteria. When someone say that a manuscript is the best, the most important, or have the best pedigree, we need to know what the criteria were, including the presuppositions. If you have already studied textual criticism, you have probably heard the phrase One of the principles of textual criticism is manuscripts should be weighted rather than counted. But is this principle true? No, these are not our presuppositions. So how then does this principle become popular? Further, could it be used to keep people from coming to know the precise wording of the original text to understand what happened? We need to recognize that this principle is based on two presuppositions. The first argument, the original wording was lost in the first century. It rejects the possibility that the transmission of the text of the New Testament was normal, that is, the text of the manuscripts being recognized as inspired from the beginning and have been treated as the word of God, that is, the copies made reasonable, honest copies of the materials they have in hand. Second argument, the presupposition of a genealogy, the whole Byzantine book was a result of a revision. In textual criticism, revision is called recension. Thus, the whole Byzantine bulk, that is, the majority of the manuscripts, was considered irrelevant because they alleged that the Byzantine bulk was reduced into a single source, an imposing power a review of a ecclesiastical authority. It is probably that the popularization of this principle, weighing, not counting, is based upon the presuppositions underlying the work of Hort. We should remember that the criteria for weighing manuscripts came from Hort, but they are false. The truth is that the text was never lost, there was no revision or recension, nor is there any historical record of imposition of ecclesiastical authority. It is all speculation without any evidence. What are the consequences of that principle before weighing or counting, there is an analogy that comes into play. It is the analogy of a river close to the source. The closer to the source the water, the cleaner is the water. The New Testament text was a river that went on its way. So the older the manuscripts, the closer to the source, and therefore the better the text. So even before beginning to wait, the oldest manuscripts are preferred and the Byzantine bulk is set aside. 
once almost all the Byzantine bulk is set aside, subjective criteria are used to weigh the variants. Although Byzantine variants are part of a bigger set, they have a prior disadvantage of being considered late, distant from the source. After 90 to 95% of the manuscripts have been declared to be irrelevant, then the critics proceed to weigh the variant. In practice, most attention is given to the Alexandrian manuscripts, which are generally the oldest since they were buried in the sands of the deserts of Egypt, which correspond to 1 or 2% of the Greek known manuscripts. We should also clarify that the method used for weighing came from the Alexandrian school of textual criticism that was applied to the classical writings of Homer and Plato, secular manuscripts. In other words, they treated the New Testament manuscripts as being secular literature. They think that the New Testament copies would deal with the sacred with the same mentality as the scribes who copied Homer's manuscripts. Anyone who has studied the evidence knows that merely counting the manuscript does not solves the problem. This is because manuscripts have characteristics in common that allows grouping into families. However, since 100% of the manuscripts represents the truth, wouldn't 99% also represent the truth? In our point of view, a majority of 90% or more of the Greek manuscripts also means that the vast majority of the families are in agreement. So a majority of at least 90% of the manuscripts of the same readings should be convincing since the families have not yet been empirically defined when the manuscript's evidence is seriously divided, no variant reach 50%, we must have other criteria. So then, notice that the question counting or weighing the manuscripts was always spurious, that is to say, both the method and the presuppositions are false. For us, manuscripts should be counted and analyzed. For us, weighing is an inappropriate term. There is no scale or unit of measurement to measure the weight of a text, of a reading. We inform you that we have a book, Family 35, original text of the New Testament, Exposition of Evidence. Thank you and until the next video.